let's talk about what it means for a vector space to be finite dimensional. So as before, we will let L uh, be a list in V consisting of V1 through Vm, some vectors from V. And so we saw what the span of a list was in the last video clip. So if, uh, whoops, let's see. So if the uh, span of L is equal to a vector space, then we say that L spans V. So that's what it means to say that uh, a list spans a vector space. So you might have heard terminology like um, L is a spanning set. for V, which for the present book, we'd have to replace with list because this author prefers to work with lists. Um, and then it's, it's also worth noting that uh, the author, whenever they say list, they mean finite. So finite is actually intended to be part of the definition of a list. Okay, so then, um, and, and that's actually important for this next definition, which is that a vector space V is finite dimensional if and only if it's spanned by some list. And so otherwise, so if it's not finite dimensional, it's called infinite dimensional. And, and I'll usually write this for short as with this notation right here. So that's infinite dimensional. Okay. So yeah, maybe just for emphasis, let me write uh, finite right here, just to emphasize that that's part of the definition of list. Okay, so examples, let's see. So what's in it? So um, finite dimensional vector spaces, well, that's everything you probably studied in your uh, previous linear algebra class, so definitely, Rn and Cn um, are always going to be finite dimensional. And it actually turns out, so spoiler alert, any finite dimensional vector space is basically Fn for the right choice of n. When I say is basically, I mean it is identical to from the point of linear algebra up to a relabeling of the elements. So it's like the same thing, but by another name. Anyway, we'll talk about that idea later on. It's called isomorphism. So we say any finite dimensional vector space is isomorphic to Fn, but more on that much, much, much later. Let's look at a couple examples of infinite dimensional. So suppose we take uh, some interval in R and to make it non-trivial, I'll just make sure that A is less, strictly less than B then um, if I look at the functions from S into R, that's going to be an infinite dimensional um, vector space. And in fact, it doesn't have to be an interval. S doesn't. Uh, it's That's sort of uh, the most familiar thing. But um, If S is any infinite set, doesn't have to be uncountable, doesn't have to be an interval, whatever, if it's infinite, then um, R to the S is gonna be infinite as well, infinite dimensional. Um, but I wanted to look at uh, the case when S is an interval because then we can talk about uh, 
the continuous functions. So the continuous functions on the interval from A to B, which I'll just write like this, C of AB. That's an infinite dimensional subspace of, of R to the S.